Hi there. This is Esther. I'm a surface designer and illustrator. I love to make art and teach others my process. This video is part of my Skillshare class called Alpha Lock Clipping Mask, Layer Mask in Procreate and Photoshop. If you enjoy what you learn here, you're welcome to grab the two months for free link in my description box later. The next concept in line is called Clipping Mask. Think of it as a close cousin of Alpha Lock we just learned, but only 147 times better. If you ever face the choice between Clipping Mask and Alpha Lock, always, always go for Clipping Mask because it's non destructive, which means that you can revert your changes anytime without permanent consequences to your drawing, even after you exit out of your file. And it can be converted to a normal layer whenever it needs to, and it has all the options that a normal layer comes with. Without further ado, let's jump into this lesson. The official definition of clipping masks have something to do with control the ability of one layer using the content of another. That can be a little bit abstract to understand at first, so let's look at the visual here. For instance, we have a layer here as our primary layer, or you can also call it a parent layer. On top of that, there is a new layer with the paper clip icon on it. When I turn the top layer into a clipping mask, you will see that the icon gets clipped off where it runs outside of the edges of the parent layer. In reality, the paper clip is actually still intact, but only the overlapped area is visible. That's the non-destructive nature of the clipping mask. You can turn any layer into a clipping mask by selecting Clipping Mask on the Layer Option menu. Once a clipping mask layer is created, you will be able to see the elbow-shaped arrow as an indicator, and the layer will be slightly indented as well. All right, now let's hop over to iPad to see how it works. If you want to follow along, you're welcome to download the foliage file that comes with the class. Once you have the file open, you can come over to the layer panel and you can see the layer structure we have. It's pretty simple. All the foliage is on one layer and we have a simple background color. So first, we want to create a normal layer on top of the foliage. At the moment, nothing special, no masking, no alpha lock. I'm just going to create a very contrasty color, maybe this yellow, to draw on this new layer we just created. I'm going to use a pretty big fluffy brush to just draw diagonally. Don't worry too much about the shape, just give it a natural stroke. And then I'm going to pick orange color to draw another parallel stroke next to it. So right now this layer is entirely independent on itself, but I'm going to turn it into a clipping mask by selecting clipping mask over here. As soon as the transition is finished, you can see that the only visible area is where the foliage and the big strokes intersects, which leads us back to the definition, which says the visibility of the clipped layer is controlled by the content and the transparency of the parent layer below. So in our specific situation, the foliage is the parent layer. All the leaf shapes controls the visibility of the top layer. So I'm going to create another layer on top of that. And before I draw anything on it, I'm going to turn it into a clipping mask. And I'm going to pick a um, nice dark purple on it and draw another big stroke. And this time I can visualize the final result in real time. 
So I'm just going to draw a big fluffy stroke kind of parallel to the previous stroke we have before. So even though it looks like our big blue fluffy stroke is clipped, the stroke itself is actually intact. If we turn off the clipping mask on the blue stroke layer, you can see that we have the entire stroke preserved. It's just that the visibility can be affected by clipping mask. And now I'm going to create another clipping mask and give it a different texture. This time, instead of a um, big fluffy stroke, I want to choose something that is kind of sandy and more detailed. I'm just going to zoom in so you can see the effect better. I'm going to increase the size of the stroke. Just a little nice touch over here. I'm going to do the same thing for the orange. Maybe increase the size a little bit more and add little sparkles next to the big fluffy strokes we have. All right. So now we have the foliage selected. If I click plus sign over here, automatically it adds another clipping mask on top of the foliage. That's not exactly what I want. I want this layer to be independent, but the foliage layer. So I'm going to drag this layer below and you will see the little elbow shaped arrow has disappeared. That shows me that there is no clipping relationship whatsoever. So I'm just going to go around and pick a random color, maybe this lighter green. Let's see how it goes. Go back to my fluffy stroke. Okay. I'm just going to go around and fill the gaps a little bit. Okay, I think I'm done here. I'm just gonna turn this layer on and off so you can see what I did over here. So this is our scribble layer. I'm actually gonna rename it so we know what we're talking about. Scribble. I'm gonna turn the visibility on and off so you can see what I did over here. Say that I exit out of the file and even turn off the procreate. And then the next day I came back and all of a sudden, for some reason, I want to change all the scribbles to a different color, say this bright pink. The worst option, which is still workable, is to delete this layer and entirely and to redraw the whole thing. That involves a lot of work. Scribbles are relatively easy, but if you imagine you spend two hours on a drawing and you probably don't want to do it again unless you have to. And the second least favorite option is to use um, alpha lock. Like we learned before, you can just turn on the alpha lock and come to each individual scribbles and just paint over it. Since we're low on layer counts, we can afford to create a new layer just for the coloring purpose. First, I'm gonna turn off the alpha lock over here and create a new layer. 
and then turn it into a clipping mask and pick whatever color you chose and just drag and drop the little color dot to the canvas. Instantly, you have everything you painted beneath colored in pink. And of course you can change it to whatever other colors you choose instantly. And then you can also change the blending mode of this one. Like any other layer, you change to multiply, darken, whatever option that fits you the best. I'm going to stay with the, yeah, I'm going to stay with the multiply. And you can also change the same thing over here on any clipping masks. It just adds more fun and flexibility to it. Say that in the future, if you're low on layer counts, you can select two layers and then just combine it down. And it will preserve the blending mode you have selected. And that will free up one more layer for you. Over here, I'm going to show you another scenario that might come handy in the future. So say that I have another layer that is under my original parent layer. Just for the sake of being super obvious, I'm going to make it like a red oval shape over here. And I'm going to color this whole thing. This exists under the foliage layer. Say that for some reason I'm going to delete the foliage layer. What happens to all the clipping masks is that immediately they're going to hunt on to whatever that layer that is right beneath the original parent layer. So instead of having the foliage layer as the parent layer, they will hunt on to this big red dot as a parent layer. Do remember all the clipping masks and the parent layer has to stay together. If you want to group them together, you can do this by right swipe each one of the layer and then click group over here at the very top. However, let's just undo that. However, if you only group the clipping masks, I'm going to deselect the primary layer. If you only group the clipping masks, the automatically the clipping relationship is going to be deactivated. As you can see over here, although they're indented because they are all belong to a new group, we don't see the little elbow-shaped arrow over here. Procreate only allows one degree of clipping masks which means that you cannot create a secondary clipping masks. For example, if you want to draw within the boundary of this um, yellow and orange strokes, you do have to use alpha lock over here. Say that I locked it and I'm going to pick um, obnoxious green color so that you can see the contrast. And if I draw over here, my strokes are staying within the boundary of the painted pixels. So I guess you can combine the alpha lock together with the clipping masks. If you have enjoyed this tutorial, I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel. If you would like to grow your design and illustration skills, I would love for you to check out my Skillshare classes where I teach my design process in depth. In the description box, you will find a link that will give you two months for free.